Hello, Mike. Um, for this presentation, I guess I'm just going to talk a bit about myself, my work that I do at the Splat Chain Chimic Salton, and a little bit, a little bit about uh, digitization. And uh, that's really close. <laughs> so, Mike Hawaii up. My name is Aaron Leon. Esquest Trilluikin. Uh, that's a name I got in 2004, which translates to something like uh, like an arrow straight aim on target. Um, Splatchine is a community located in the North Okanagan, around the town of Inderby. We have about 7,000 members total and about three to 400 living on reserve. Um, I started working at the Splatchine Chimic Salton, I guess, quite a while ago, just under my grandma Rosalind Williams and helping her transition into the digital era. Uh, the Splatchine Chimic Salton is a teaching center that started as a daycare, but as we put more emphasis on the language and culture, it turned into the Chimic Sultan Teaching Center. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization. Sorry. So we come across a lot of those um, funding, grant to grant type stuff. Um, one of my initial roles was to digitize the resources collected by my grandma and find out digital storage solutions to that. Um, yeah, so digitizing and managing the physical archive, making a filing system, which makes sense. Um, I guess picking up from all the different grantees who've uh, pieced together what they thought was a good filing system and putting that all in order, which takes quite a while to figure out everybody's different mindsets. <laughs> and then I guess uh, digital, uh, trans yeah, transferring into some kind of a digital database or filing system that makes sense and that you can kind of, uh, I guess, just make sure that other people can pick up on what you're thinking and continue that kind of work. So, and then I, through the indigitization grant, it kind of, I was kind of looking for answers to how I can do this kind of thing and uh, came across the indigitization grant and it was kind of pretty happenstance and awesome that they explained a lot of these kind of things. Um, in the first round of indigitization, I applied to digitize the collection of the audio cassettes. Uh, this collection was part of my grandma's documentation of the Splatchian history that she started recording in 1991, but we have tapes that go back till 1975 or so, and a few hundreds of tapes. So it was quite a bit of work, but we're thankful for the funding to make that work possible. Um, this collection is mostly based around discussions with the elders on the, like, everything from the local geography, the Stipchakula, the stories, uh, different historical information, uh, language lessons, and interviews. I guess trying to remember some of the words and things that make our Splatchian dialect pretty unique. And a lot of interviews with our late, one of our late last um, local historians, Grandpa Francis. So these are very precious recordings, and we're very grateful to have the ability to, I guess, digitize them and make them more accessible. Um, these recordings are, yeah, like, like I said, they're precious. They will be a resource, a resource to the collective members of Splatchine when our fluent speakers are gone, because uh, it's a bit scary. <laughs> um, the content recorded, thanks to the indigitization program, and the structure of the program. Uh, we now have metadata and stuff, so it is searchable, but we're really looking for uh, transcription and to further process these, and I guess for funding and how to use, so if anybody has some advice on good transcription details, I'd be into that. <laughs> and um, yeah, then digitization really helped us give ideas, really helped us set up and give ideas to how a digital archive can look and some ways of making that practical. We have set up a digital long-term solution based on a RAID setup and have off-site and on-site backups, which is pretty nice. We're pretty fortunate for that too. Um, yeah, another thing that was pretty neat and as we become, I guess, involved with a lot more projects and we kind of grow as a teaching center and branching out, we're discovering the importance of access protocols and who can access this information. Um, if we are to use a CMS like uh, Mercutu, okay. Um, 
And so far, um, it seems like a lot of it takes a lot of work and we have a small team of two, three people now. So to dive into something and just put in a whole lot of work into metadata, we haven't been ready for that jump yet. So, so far, um, we just have people coming in and asking for it. Because um, as a reminder earlier with Larry Grant, Elder Larry Grant reminded us that um, digitization does not have the human element. We still need our, our elders and knowledge keepers to give us cultural context around the files in our digital archive. Um, we have shared a bit online through YouTube and language videos and cultural events. Um, that kind of stuff was made with the mindset that it would be publicly available. So that's a little bit different than the archives and collections that were in interviews. And trying to figure all that kind of stuff out has been quite the process. Um, so I guess digital context. I'll try to see what is important for the last five minutes here. <laughs> yeah, so the, some of the digital files that we've been able to obtain from the cassettes have been used um, in curriculum in teaching the, at the Splatchin to McSaldon where we have a big emphasis on getting the kikia of the elders to teach the mammal, the children. Uh, we do this mostly through song and different seasonal curriculum. Um, a lot of those lessons have been recorded in the cassettes, so now we can use them again, which is nice. Uh, some of the cassettes contain historical knowledge and advanced lessons that are being transformed into uh, lessons to put into the app that Marianne had mentioned through SFU. And um, this app is pretty neat because to me, uh, you can create curriculum and put it in a place and help train teachers to train the community and give out resources to the community and then help, I guess, track progress through that learning. Um, yeah, and plus everybody has cell phones and apps are really neat. <laughs> Another project that we're doing is in partnership with uh, UBCO master student David Laco, and this is kind of a, a app video game hybrid that was inspired by the way the game Never Alone approached the video game realm with uh, storytelling to share the Nupiaq stories in the Alaskan native culture. Um, yeah, this app is also informed by our involvement in community theater and storytelling and spectacular. So we were kind of looking towards this to help involve the youth into, I guess, look towards, well, they play video games, right? So to see themselves within a video game is pretty, it's pretty big. So we're looking to maybe re recreate something like that. Um, so yes, these are some of the projects that will be informed by the tapes digitized by the indigitization program and I guess the long-term structures that they helped to build, which I'm very grateful for. <laughs> because, yeah, these are important. They're the only thing we'll have once our fluent speakers pass on. So, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. And I'd like to take a second to just acknowledge everyone in this room for all the great work that they're doing. Like, it's been a big learning experience for us and I'd like to thank you for all the work you're doing so quick stealth.